Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Prospects Energy PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and will publish those responses where it is appropriate to do so. And before we begin, we would just like to submit the following poll. And if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I would now like to hand you over to CEO Mark Ralph. Mark, good morning, sir. Good morning. And thank you for hosting this uh, webinar today. So um, I have got on screen there the corporate presentation, which was updated um, early this month, uh, which is on our website. Now, it's, it's a very long presentation designed for those who don't know the company at all. I'm going to use it as, um, as a structure for this meeting, but I'm not going to talk to every single word on the slide. If you want to refer to it um, later, it is on the website and uh, it is available. And it will be updated as we progress um, the assets on the, um, the now three countries that we are um, going to be operating in. So to start off with, uh, we have um, we have Prospects Energy is uh, is aim listed as you know. We have assets in northern Italy, the Selva Malvezzi uh, production concession, and we have now three assets in the in in Spain. Um, the El Romeral um, power, gas to power plant uh, near Carmona, east of Seville, um, in southern Spain, and the, the Vallura uh, gas um, concession, which we have just farmed into, um, in the north of Spain, where HECO Energy is the operator. Uh, the other asset in Spain is a suspended uh, exploration license um, um, called Tesserillo, um, and I can. I'll touch on that briefly um, later on. So here is the uh, uh, the board and the team. We have the four board members at the top, including myself, uh, the CEO, and then the team members below, which has been expanded recently because we have uh, a country manager in Poland. And uh, for the first time, we've got um, Tomek Rozowski, who lives in Poland um, on, on the chart. He's actually been working for us for a while on contract, but now his uh, his his role is increased as we apply for those um, licenses in Poland. So, briefly on um, uh, Italy, Selva Malvezzi is the name of the concession. Uh, it's in northern Italy, uh, near the town of Bologna, um, and it is a production concession where we have permission to produce hydrocarbons from the area and we're producing from one well at the moment. The operator is Po Valley. This is a picture of the well site and the, uh, the gas processing plant, which was funded and paid for and built in 2022-2023, uh, where we got first gas on the 4th of July last year. It's been producing at the rate of around 80,000 standard cubic meters a day um, since that time. We've got four new wells planned on the concession and um, there's a satellite view of the um, of the where the well site is and how it's connected to the SNAM gas grid. SNAM is the um, local operator of the national transmission system in Italy. So uh, the proven gas reserves in um, in Selva, uh, there's a competent persons report which uh, allocates the, the reserves uh, net to us. I'm not going to read out the numbers; they're all there and the CPR is referenced on our website as well. So that's the map of the concession. Um, the, the one labeled red, it's called Selva, is in production. Um, the, and the uh, prospects which we hope to drill are Selva North, Selva South, uh, Selva East and um, Ricadina. Now, actually, North and South are not prospects because they're um, previously drilled structures which were uh, decommissioned early on account of gas price and um, uh, other factors affecting the gas market at the time. So North and South is what's, what's termed a contingent resource, whereas Ricadina and East Selva are prospective resources. Uh, there are difference, uh, differences under the guidelines for defining reserves and resources, uh, as many of you will know. 
So um, that's what's happening with uh, with Zelda. We, we're planning on shooting um, a limited 3D seismic campaign at the end of this year in order to define the subsurface locations of the wells that we're drilling. Uh, I'll go on to the timeline of the drilling uh, toward the end of the uh, presentation um, because it's going to involve all three assets that we have wells planned for. So on to Spain, um, El Romoral, um, uh, Vaira and Tesserillo. So El, uh, Vaira is the one we farmed into um, in August after raising money to do that transaction. And El Romoral we've had since um, Prospects has been an owner since March 2021. And uh, Tesserillo has been owned for longer than that, um, predates my time at Prospects. So the Vallejo gas field, um, it's in the north of Spain. It's, um, I'm going to have to put my glasses on, apologies. Um, Vallejo is in the north of Spain. Uh, we acquired 7.5% of the company which, op which owns and operates the concession. Um, and that translates to 7.24% uh, uh, interest in the reserves in the ground, the gas processing plant, which is connected to the producing well, and importantly, the connection to the gas grid where we export and sell the gas. Um, remaining reserves uh, is substantial. Um, uh, the gross number is uh, 90 BCF, that's um, two and a half billion cubic meters. So net to us at six and a half BCF or um, just under 0.2 billion cubic meters net to prospects. Um, we are funding 15% of the development well, which is still drilling now, um, and the development program in 2025. Um, and we fund that 15% um, in order to earn the 7.5% interest in the company. What's unusual about this farm in is that although we're funding 15%, uh, we actually get 15% of the revenues from the current well being drilled, uh, the well which is suspended and will be back into production when the current well is, is brought onto production. And we get 15% of that income, plus we get 10% interest on the capital investment we made on making the transaction. This is an unusual farming process. It's not a two for one promote where you pay the money and, you, um, and that's it uh, for double the cost and half the interest. This is a payback mechanism, which is um, a very attractive deal to um, to be involved with. So the program in 2025 is going to be wholly if or, or partly funded by um, the cash, the cash which is coming in from the asset um, when it gets into production, which will happen in uh, as early as ne next month, it could be this month, later this month, but probably now we're deepening the well. It's going to be um, in November. So the this is a, a seismic cross section uh, showing the well path. It's a deviated well because the well is being drilled from the existing uh, concession well pad. So it's it's now reached up to 45 degrees inclination. Um, it's drilling into the reservoir, and as the RNS said earlier this week, um, uh, sorry, last week, uh, we've encountered gas, and we, throughout the coring, we've been having gas shows throughout. Um, the wireland logs have been acquired, um, and I ask shareholders to be patient. Uh, this is a deviated well, and the wireland logging tools have been conveyed down, uh, down the hole with the assistance of drill pipe. Um, this is a procedure which I've actually been involved with uh, in my past existence uh, with uh, Schlumberger, the company that is acquiring the logs. Uh, it's a very um, long process, but it, it guarantees that you get the data. It means you have to pull the um, tools up and down with the drill pipe um, and uh, acquire the logs um, after you have successfully uh, conveyed the tools down the hole. The important thing is to measure resistivity, porosity, other uh, background of radiation. And these measurements are being analyzed now. And we hope to have an update for that um, 
when uh, when that analysis is completed. At the moment, the well is at the casing point and uh, is um, the seven inch casing has been run and we can give um, an update to the to, to the market as the well progresses. But uh, this is all fairly standard uh, procedure. Um, it's a high pressure, high temperature reservoir. It, it's a it's a quite a challenging well. It's been it's been delivered successfully and uh, on budget by the operator Aco Energy. Now, just to round off on on Biura, the reservoir came in some fifty meters higher to prognosis. Um, this can happen with uh, seismic depth conversion. Uh, what that means is the reservoir top reservoir being higher meant that the reservoir the rock formations beneath the producing um, discovered Viura gas field have never been appraised. It's called the Utrillus B formation. This Utrillus B formation could also be gas bearing. So it was what they call a no-brainer by the investors and the operator to deepen the well, to drill further down into the Utrillus B formation, because if there's gas there, we could substantially change the resources uh, booked on this field. No promises yet, but it was um, for, for 1 million uh, euros, we can get down there. And if we find gas, we spend a further 1.5 million euros to flow test it. Um, we have paid the success case, our share of the 2.5 million euros. So that's our 15% share of that number has been paid from our existing resources, which we have from production income and from the contingency on the funding of this deal. This has been a very good deal for prospects to be involved in. So El Romoral, um, a lot of people know all about this. We have uh, prospective resources on the concessions, uh, concessions called one, two, and three. Um, and we have, uh, we are in the permitting process to drill five of those structures. The permitting process started some two and a half years ago. The environmental impact assessment um, needed a lot of um, monitoring to be done before we could uh, submit to the ministry. Uh, the ministry has all the documentation and we are at the point um, very soon, we hope, of actually publicly gazetting um, in the local area in Andalusia, publicly gazetting the permits for these five wells. When we get to that stage, we're in the statutory consultation period for which there is a prescribed time frame for people to respond. However, those time frames are widely ignored in Spain, uh, which is very frustrating. So the regulatory process um, can take longer than uh, the statutory minimum days for consultation processes. So um, I'll come on to the drilling schedule a bit later on, and I can talk to that. Um, it's all that we're ready to drill these. Uh, all we need to do is mobilize a rig after the permits are approved. So some background history on Romoral, uh, with, that's a picture, aerial picture with the power plant with the solar panels on the roof. And the picture of the field on which uh, in the future we hope to install solar panels uh, to utilize the spare capacity into the national grid at, um, at Carmona, uh, east of Seville. Some detail on what we did on the seismic reprocessing processing in Romoral which we will successfully uh, um, change the nature of the subsurface interpretation, we will do the same thing on the Selva Malvetsi uh, concession in northern Italy, together with the operator Po Valley. Uh, summary of the resources and reserves in Romoral, uh, I'll leave that for you. And here's Tesserillo, it's in the very south of Spain. It's a concession which is suspended as an exploration uh, permit at the moment. Uh, we've applied to change that to an exploitation concession. We want to drill a well on that. A well was drilled in 1957, which, is, which flowed gas to surface. The uh, thing to point out here is that the, the resources, contingent resources, um, or actually it's prospective resources uh, defined by the competent person report, um, they're potentially very large. It's 831 BCF mid-case. That's a very large gas field 
um, if it's there, we just need to twin the exploration well, which discovered the gas in 1957, drill it properly, and I think we could prove up a very large gas field. So um, this is the timeline I wanted to talk to you about. So this is frankly the most optimistic timeline for drilling that uh, we could we could come up with. So starting from the top, um, El Romoral, we're in the permitting process now. Here we are at the beginning of Q424. It's going to be another six or eight or six or nine months before we're going to get the um, permits submitted. So it's a very optimistic um, red arrow there in Q225 that we could be drilling at that point. The point is, when I have to um, look at um, allocating funds, we need to make sure we have funds in the right place at the right time. Um, this is like the most optimistic scenario, which from my point of view is the, is the hardest scenario to fund because we have to make sure we have accumulated enough production income to fund this drilling. Or in the worst case scenario, uh, if we've got permits to drill the wells, then we would have to raise money to do that. So it's all, going, it's all going to be contingent on the timing of drilling. Uh, when it comes to Viura, uh, one, Viura 1B development well is drilling now, and we're going to deepen that. So those red arrows might stretch a little uh, beyond uh, to the end of Q4. And as soon as that's done, um, the V3 um, well, which is suspended, will be converted into a water injector to dispose of the any produced water which is coming out from the Viro 1B well and the existing Viro 1 well, which is suspended and ready for production. Then we've got in 2025, the follow-on drilling campaign on the, um, on the Viro gas field, where we're going to be drilling uh, two more wells. Um, they're called Viro 3A and Viro 3B. One of those is permitted the, uh, the 3B is yet to be um, fully permitted by the ministry. That, so down to Italy, I mentioned earlier, we were going to be acquiring 3D seismic. It's a limited 3D seismic. It's not, it's really a dense 2D seismic, if those who understand these things know the difference. So we'll, we'll be acquiring a seismic using a micro size uh, truck. Um, and there will be certain uh, seismic lines which will redefine the subsurface structures we hope uh, will be interpreted and reprocessed in order to um, in order to uh, further define and optimize the locations of the drilling of the wells. So we've got north and south will be drilled first and then East Selva and Ricadina um, where the subsurface locations will be um, uh, will be optimized on results of the seismic um, drilling. So we'll be drilling in about Q2, Q3, 2025, again, subject to permitting. The permitting process is underway, and uh, we hope to have news soon on, uh, on some progression there. Uh, the important thing is that the operator, Po Valley Energy, has identified the land locations from which the wells will be drilled. North and south will be drilled from one pad, deviated wells north and south into those structures. And um, Ricadina and East Selva have the well pads uh, identified. So the discussions with the landowners is ongoing um, and that's going well. So, that's uh, really all I wanted to talk to today on um, what um, Prospects is doing on its existing assets. Um, what I now need to do is to touch on Poland, because that is a very recent um, piece of news that happened last Friday, where we qualified um, to um, apply for and uh, own licenses in, in Poland onshore. Uh, my technical team has identified two uh, areas. We started off with three areas which were onshore in Poland um, and we optimized that and narrowed it down to the two areas for, for reasons of access and um, optimizing uh, our stretch. Um, the areas were identified uh, shallow, um, tertiary, mainly tertiary, um, onshore 
gas where there, are, where there is some seismic acquisition already has occurred and where we have analyzed that there are perspective um, uh, there are prospects to be drilled on um, on those areas so the submissions um, have gone into the Polish ministry and when they when that gets uh, gazetted i.e it gets publicly uh, notified that the concessions have been applied for um, we are applying for open acreage so this allows people to look at um, what we are applying for and which areas we're doing and we are we um, hope to be awarded those um, those areas as licenses um, in uh, early as Q1 2025. Um, I will let the market know and let all shareholders know uh, more details when we have them and when it is publicly gazetted and also I'll let uh, everyone know on the progress of that application. But one thing I want to point out is that the program here is a long-term program um, from the point of license award, if we get them, which it would be um, early next year, first quarter, maybe second quarter, depending on the processes. Um, we've got a, a three-year campaign to uh, analyze, acquire data, buy data, um, analyze that, and then identify prospects we're going to drill. And then we would identify which blocks we want to drill and where, and that drilling is going to happen in 2028 or maybe beyond by the time we get all the permitting and everything straight. Um, we hope to fund this from existing production. Um, we have funded the campaign in Poland to date or over this past year from existing resources, from existing production, from the mainly from the Selva Malvetsi concession, which is throwing off cash at a decent rate. So what that means is that um, everything that we're, we're doing at the moment uh, is 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 funded from um, from existing production. When the Viera field comes on stream, and we are going to enjoy 15% of that production coming in from the Viera uh, new wells, that is going to fund the drilling campaign, not only on Viera, but depending on the gas price, which is heading in the positive direction on the TTF at the moment, uh, we could be funding all of that campaign, um, depending on what the level of production is, and of course the gas price. So we've got some very positive things um, heading uh, our way. We're now operating. We're now going to be um, have a have assets in in three European countries. We already have um, access to three assets, which we'll be producing uh, by next month, including Viera, because Selva in Italy is producing, Romoral in north, southern Spain is producing, and with Viera in northern Spain coming onto production. Um, next month we'll have three producing assets in two european nations and a third european nation as poland as our expansion plan so uh, at that point i will um stop talking um and i'll hand over to the questions and uh i'll attempt to answer what is has been posed and i'll take a quick tweak, tweak. Perfect, Mark. That's great. And thank you very much indeed um, for your presentation this morning. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the top right corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the company takes a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I'd just like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can all be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, Mark, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions ahead of today's event. And as you can see there, we've also received a number of questions um, for out your presentation this morning as well. Um, so firstly, thank you to all of those on the call for taking the time to submit their questions. And Mark, at this point, if I may just hand back to you just to read out those questions and give your responses where it's appropriate to do so. And if I pick up from you at the end, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, I at the moment, I've only seen two two questions. Um, some of them are quite long. Should I, should I be reading them out so, to answer them? Uh, yes, please, sir. Okay. Okay, so the first question I've got here is um, what attracted the multi-million pound US operators Heiko Energy to invest two and a half million um, pounds into Prospects Energy at 6p for a 10% stake and give up to a 7.5% stake in their producing asset via a gas field with 800% upside and probably even more? Well, this is an interesting question. Um, 
it is, uh, I think, no surprise to anyone that raising money on the AIM stock market um, is particularly challenging uh, for any companies at the moment. It has been made doubly challenging by anyone relating to fossil fuels because of the um, attitude in some sectors and by some banks and investors towards fossil fuels and, and investment being uh, cancelled basically by those that think that it should not uh, be carrying on. It is my belief that um, gas in particular is going to be here for a long time to come um, as we change the world from um, reliance on fossil fuels and into uh, renewables, um, which that transition is going to take uh, a lot longer than um, I think the many politicians wish it would. Uh, I'll remind everyone that we, we in Europe, uh, the UK, and in particularly Spain and Italy, are importing huge volumes of liquefied natural gas. Um, they're even importing Russian gas in Spain and Italy. Um, uh, Italy has has decided that it is uh, going to concentrate on energy security, which is why we're finding in Italy the permitting process has improved. In Spain, um, they reluctantly admit that they need uh, natural gas for the future. We need to convince them that onshore indigenous natural gas is a better thing to be doing than importing it um, from the US or from the Middle East, where the carbon footprint is some 30 times worse than onshore indigenous natural gas. So to answer the question, what attracted the um, HECO Energy? Um, the fact of the matter is HECO um, was looking at um, other investments uh, to uh, invest in gas in onshore Europe. I can't speak for them, but when I contacted them, uh, and we contacted them you, uh, with our brokers, VSA Capital, who um, actually made the introduction, um, we asked them if they would cornerstone our, um, our fundraise in order to help us invest in the Viro gas field. They agreed to cornerstone it, and um, by having a large number already committed, we could go around other investors to see if they would support the fundraise, which is essentially what happened. Um, that's how it came about. Um, Heiko Energy only did that after doing extensive due diligence on the assets that we have in prospects, including Southern Malvetsi in, in Chile and in El Romeral um, down in southern Spain. So they, they see uh, an upside in Prospects Energy, and I hope to be working very closely with them um, in the future for further, um, further investments into Prospects Energy. Uh, I can't speak for them, but uh, they decided that they would invest 10%, and that is um, a very welcome thing for us to have a, uh, a large cornerstone investor and shareholder in Prospects Energy. Um, just to fully answer this question, what attracted them? Why, why did the uh, why did Heiko wish to farm down in the first place? Um, they had already attracted a, um, a, a, a quite a few. Um, it's about twelve or fifteen other investors into this um, into this process. They're all based in the USA. Contacts um, known by the uh, the CEO of Heiko Energy. And um, we, we got wind of this transaction happening and uh, it wasn't open to just anyone. And so we, we qualified and um, got the deal done. So I think it's probably enough on that. So the next question I've got here, um, are we to ignore broker valuations if we raise 6p when the valuation was 18p? It scares off the investor if the attitude is that's what the markets are for, is applied. With our assets, we should be able to secure asset-backed finance or other ventures if it is more shareholder value. When the market gets a sniff of a raise, they walk it down and then they get set the price, which is destructive to anything that's being built. Please confirm there's other ways to skin the finance hat than raises. There is via a cash call in May 24 and four drills to complete in 25. What's the funding plan? If this cannot be answered, we um, 
cannot be answered well, we have a value problem as this question will be shared. Yeah, I see the point here. Now, um, broker valuations are, um, are done as a target price. Yeah, you can't ignore them. Um, broker valuations um, assume risking on, on the assets. It assumes risking on the delivery of, um, of permits, uh, the delivery of drilling the wells, and so um, it's a target price. Um, with respect to asset-backed finance, um, let me spend some time on this because this is uh, often uh, misunderstood. Asset-backed finance um, is another name for debt, debt finance. Um, I have a lot of experience with raising debt finance in um, other assets in other companies. And the way it works, if you can find a bank that be actually willing to lend you money, and again, the council culture has meant that a lot of banks will not lend money for oil and gas companies or fossil fuels. Um, if you can find a bank that's going to finance you, they will look at a competent person's report on your proven reserves. They will look at what's called the spread of those reserves, the most likely, the low case and the high case. The high case is called P10, 10% chance of exceeding that number. The mid case is P50, most likely. And the low case is the P90, 90% chance of the reserves being larger than, than that number. A bank will take the P90 reserves, the smallest number. They will then take 75% of that number and they will lend you money against that if you can get them to uh, agree to that. But they will lend you some money against that at a coupon, which will be uh, quite high because there is risk. And they will look at the structure of the company, which is Prospects Energy with a market cap of £27 million, pounds, and they will see if they want to lend against that. They will. You're mortgaging the asset, but to have that, you have to have a, a, an asset which is valued, and that means a competent person report. Um, so, for Vira, there was no CPR. This was done on the resources and reserves that my technical team judged was there according to what Heiko Energy had, had looked at. And, and so there was, there, was no, I, there was no chance of raising debt finance against this asset. But what I just explained on how banks look at debt finance is how it's very, very difficult to secure reserve-based lending at this time in this market. So that leads us to equity raises. And I would argue that this equity raise that we did back in August at 6p is going to be accretive to the share price of this company. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I know a lot of the shareholders uh, by name. I speak to many of them um, often. And uh, I always send out um, the RNSs to those people to whom uh, wish to hear, wish to have wish to be on our circulation list. So um, communication with shareholders is is very important and I take that very seriously. So to come on to where the cash call um, um, in uh, from the Vira field is coming from, um, the cash call has actually been paid already in order to deepen the well that we're drilling into the Utrillus B formation. So our share of the two and a half million success case of discovering gas in the Trillis B formation, if it's there, we will test that. That has already been paid. And if we don't find gas there, then that money will be allocated to the drilling campaign in 2025. As I explained earlier, the income from the Vira 1B well, which will be put into production as soon as we finish drilling it, and the existing well of Vira, that production, that income is going to be coming our way at 15% of the production of the field. That is going to fund the future drilling campaign and the future plans for the expansion of prospects until payback of our um, investment in the funding of the Vira gas field, where we will then go down to the 7.5% income from the field. So I hope that addresses some of the questions um, there are other ways to skin the finance hat, and I'm aware of them. I'm, re I'm aware of reserve-based lending, i.e. Uh, debt finance. I'm also um, aware of offtake financing, where um, a gas buyer uh, 
buys the gas and you um, and they fund the uh, development program um, in order to develop that gas. Again, those transactions take a long time to, to secure and you have to find a very specialist uh, gas buyer who would be prepared to fund such a thing. So please rest assured, um, I'm looking at ways to fund the company, if not from the production income, I'm looking at ways to make sure that it increases shareholder value and doesn't dilute it. I hope that answers the question because it was a fairly fulsome question. Okay, um, another one, um, another question here from uh, uh, George W. El Romero's gas to power plant is operating at 33% capacity. How quickly do you expect to increase this and what challenges could impact this timeline? Well, the, the plant is operating at 33% capacity because we can only run one of the three engines at a time because we have insufficient gas to supply more than one engine, which means we are uh, at one third capacity. Um, the, as soon as we get the permits to drill El Romeral, um, we will be getting those uh, engines all, all, we've got two engines which are operational, one which, which is mothballed, so we alternate between um, two of them. Uh, we will get all three engines fully functional and up and running as soon as we get the permits to drill the five wells, which the timeline is uh, completely in the hands of Miteco, as it's called, the, uh, the Spanish ministry in Madrid. So we're looking at earliest next year, uh, we'll be getting up to full capacity, which will triple our income from El Romeral. Okay, a comment here. What are your thoughts on the possibility of Heiko buying prospects out? Would that be your, what would be your share pass threshold for the hyp hypothetical buyout? Ah, now, um, I don't know what Heiko's uh, game plan is. Um, I, I don't, um, I don't see them buying prospects out, but it's, it's always a possibility. Um, I can't speak for Heiko. Uh, but a, a buyout of prospects um, would always be on the cards, uh, depending on the price. And if the board of directors felt that it was um, of good value to shareholders, um, there's always a price at which something's for sale. Um, um, and we would never rule out uh, an offer if it came. But um, quite honestly, we've not had an offer. We've not even had an offer which is a noble offer. Not that I want to attract any. Um, as to the hypothetical share price threshold, I really can't comment on that. Um, I wouldn't be allowed to. Um, but uh, all I can say, it's a lot higher than where it is now. <clears throat> okay, I've got another question here. Um, it's not on the screen. Um, have we got time to go through some other questions um, at the moment? Yes, absolutely, sir. Okay, so I've got what attracted the multi-million pound US operator Heiko Energy to invest two and a half million to prospects at 6p? Oh, I've, that's one I've, sorry, I've answered that one. Um, beg your pardon, I've already answered that one. The, the viral gas fields has added another producing asset to prospects' investment portfolio. How did you identify the project and what was the criteria for investment? Um, well, as always, when I speak to our technical team, uh, we start with the rocks. If the rocks produce hydrocarbons and it's got proven gas, then that's a big tick in the box. So um, we identify the project. Um, my, my team and uh, many members of it were, were actually familiar with the Viara gas field. And uh, when this opportunity to invest came along, it was, again, what they call a no-brainer. So um, we were very happy to participate. Um, the company recently, there's another question. The company recently announced a better than expected results from Vario 1B and its decision to drill deeper. Can you explain the rationale behind the decision and how it would be funded? I think I've covered, covered that in my answers, which were rather lengthy, I'm afraid, to the previous questions. Um, we, we're going to drill deeper into the formation below because it has high chance of success that there will be gas bearing. 
Um, and it's we can basically deliver for a million euros a well which have otherwise have costed uh, an exploration well would have costed them some 25 million euros but uh, you know this is this is a this this these the well being drilled now is a, a development well because we know there's gas down there and um the indications have shown that we've got gas throughout it's a question we're just evaluating how much when we get the evaluation of the logs done so prospects has been successful qualifying to apply for licenses in poland what other european countries would you consider investing in um the answer is again uh, the asset will dictate so if we see an asset in a european country onshore um we will see if the rocks produce the high, are likely to produce the hydrocarbons and we will uh, evaluate it on that basis if it does and we like the operator and we think that the regulatory environment is um is attractive then we will look at any european country but frankly the um the attitude of the regulator is now um, as important, um, which is why we chose Poland, um, because the attitude of the regulator there is they are actually encouraging investment, especially from smaller foreign companies, uh, which is why we passed the test, or one reason why we passed the test. Um, and the asset will di dictate um, uh, where we go and how we go. So can you, next question was, can you tell us any more about prospective blocks that you've identified in Poland? And the answer to that is yes, uh, there'll be more detail available when the, um, when it is announced that our applications have uh, been lodged with the ministry um, and when it gets publicly gazetted, um, I will be able to share more information about the prospective blocks. This is a competitive process. So other people will be able to bid for the blocks uh, but we hope that they won't be as well prepared as we are because we've done extensive work on these blocks already. Um, but we'll see. There might be others applying and uh, we'll have to see who and what gets awarded. Um, how do you fund any additional investments? I think I've answered that again in the, pre in the previous questions. Um, funding, hopefully, ideally, from production income. And as production income increases in Viura, um, we will, and the gas price increases, we will start to accumulate um, sufficient funds to fund the drilling campaigns and uh, with the other assets. Now, the, it's all going to depend on the timing of the um, of the permitting process, and we're in that stage now where I'm trying to make the best estimate of when we'll be drilling, and therefore. Um, how that will be funded, but ideally from production income. So the last question I've got here is what news and activity can we expect from the company in the next six months? Well, we now have three countries in which we hope to be operating, Poland, Italy and Spain. We have um, wells per in the permitting process on three of our producing assets in northern Italy, southern Spain, and northern Spain, I'd put it to you that there is um, a pretty extreme amount of news flow that we can look forward to in the coming months as we get into the permitting process of drilling further wells on the producing assets to increase the production income in order to make Prospects a bigger company, which has always been my objective from when I joined back in July 2021. Mark, if I uh, if I may just jump back in there and thank you very much indeed for being so generous of your time there and addressing all of those questions that came in from investors this morning. And of course, if there are any further questions that do come through, we'll make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended um, just for you to review to then add any additional responses, of course, where it's appropriate mm -hmm. to do so. And we'll publish all those responses out on the platform. Um, but Mark, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments just to wrap up with, that would be great. <coughs> well, I think I've said it already, but um, uh, the, the aim here is to make Prospects a much larger company that it, than it is now. Um, the platform from which to do that is to have producing assets uh, which covers your overheads and which can cover your expansion plans. 
Um, that's already happening because the um, uh, the application process in Poland has, has, has cost some money. It's not been extremely high, but we've managed to do that entirely from production income. So the expansion of prospects um, um, and the drilling of wells when they get permitted um, is going to be the way in order to deliver higher production and therefore increased income, grow the size of the company. And who knows if we get to a place in the future, um, who knows where we might be on, on dividends. But at the moment, um, any income that we're getting uh, is going to be reinvested into the company in order to grow it to where we want it to be. So um, watch this space. Prospects is here to stay and is growing. And I'm as wedded to shareholder value as everyone else. So um, I hope you feel that the company's in safe hands and we will continue to grow it and uh, work for uh, shareholders' best interests. Perfect, uh, Mark, that's great. And thank you once again for updating investors this morning. Could I please ask investors not to close this session? You'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can really better understand your views and expectations. Uh, this will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Prospects Energy PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good morning to you all.